I always admire people who are, who admire the craft of writing. Comedy is about words, about changing words, which is why it's so hard for people when English is not your first language to understand comedy because you're playing with nuances, the meanings of words. And so I always respect that. You know, Jerry, they used to call him the doctor of comedy because he would help other comics reword their jokes when he was emceeing at the comic strip. I don't know yeah. if you remember, but I did the book on the comic strip. Uh, Chris Rock wrote the intro. I love I that book. All those guys. And everybody said Jerry would come in every night with five or six new premises on an index card. And he was just writing for hours every day. That's that's <clears> the kind of thing that I really admire when you take your craft so seriously. Yeah, uh, Jerry Seinfeld was very disciplined, and and I think a lot of other comics kind of followed that. Where you know to have that um, at, at least a couple hours a day every day to write, no matter what, because he looked at it like a job, like a nine to five job. And he's mm -hmm. like, hey, if you know if I'm getting paid to do this, I might as well put the time in and and build my craft, and and that's what he did. And, and he's like you said, a master wordsmith and observational comic and and to see the world through funny lenses and then to know how to articulate it and know what word is the funnier word like yes. albuquerque might be a funnier word than than uh you know texas or something you if, know? You, if you write a joke with the word divining rod chances are it's going to be funny you right. know? <laughs> certain words are funnier and when i teach comedy that's one of the things i talk about i keep a lot of old drafts because when I write jokes, I rewrite and I rewrite and I rewrite and I read them a few days later to to see, see them with a clear eye because you're too close to it. You can't judge the night you write them. And sometimes you have to change the order of the words. And it depends on what what word you end on and the punchline. So in those days, there was no cable TV. You had to work clean. Right, you had, yeah. if you wanted to do TV, you had to have a clean set. So all those guys, Jerry and Paul Reiser and George Wallace, all the guys that started out in those days, they all work clean. That was the only thing that you could do. And to this day, Jerry works clean. I, You know, it's so, so funny. I was performing at the West Side Comedy Club one night and I had an 830 spot. And Jerry decided that he he was home and he 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 called into the club. He said he wanted to go on at 830. And when when he decides to perform, he text all his followers to let them know so people will show up at the club so i'm sitting there waiting to go on there was somebody who was supposed to go on before me i see jerry coming down the stairs with his baseball cap down over his eyes and this particular night he came over he said hello to me which doesn't often happen he's usually very very focused but he came over and said hello the person who was supposed to perform saw jerry and left she didn't want to she <laughs> I think she didn't want to go up in front of Jerry. She said she was tired and she just left. Wow. So, so the manager of the club said to him, do you want to go right up? And he goes, no, I'll wait. And she goes, Jeff, you're up. So I had to go up in front of Jerry. And every time, you know, I work basically clean, but I do throw in a few F-bombs. And every time I did it, I felt guilty. I'm like, Jerry's here. And I got to do that. And because I'm so used to, you know, that's what the club audience expects. Right. It, I can do like if if I'm working um, like there are certain gigs where they ask you to work clean. I can do that. Right. My material, my material lends itself to that. You know, I do a lot of stuff about confusion. You know, don't you hate it when you wake up in the morning and you're really in the mood to vote and there's no election? You know? <laughs> What are you doing? That's a great again? line. So I have I have a lot of you know a lot a lot of clean material, but that night, and it's funny because very often I talk about the uh, the weather, cell phones, and texting, but that night I decided for some reason I didn't do that, mm -hmm. and Jerry, and Jerry went up and what does he talk about the weather, cell phones, and texting. And <laughs> Like, nice I, yeah he was <laughs> i don't know if it would have been good if i had done it before him or not good i don't know but it was just so interesting that um well, it was an experience for me that i had to go up right before him that's you know? pretty cool and and um i will say about 
clean comedy. Um, I'm all for it. I think clean comedy is great. I think, you know, the comics that do clean are, you know, and successfully are amazing because I think um, some comics, there are some comics that might lean on the curse words. But every now and then, I think an F-bomb or something like that helps to punctuate a a joke. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It and just gives it that I little, use, yeah. That's how I use it. I use it like to punctuate the joke. Especially coming from you, because the people might not expect an F-bomb from you. And yeah. that's even funnier. Yeah, that's what makes it funny. If you step outside of yourself, if you're someone that they don't expect, they don't know what to expect with me. I have to dress very, I I dress down when I go on stage. I take off anything. Like I always have Purell hanging from my belt. For 20 years, I'm carrying Purell. I take off everything because... <laughs> I'm very distracting to start with. People are looking, so I don't want to give them anything extra to look at. I want them to be able to listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, you I know? guess that when you say that, because you, you when you enter a room, everybody knows you're there. You have a, a, a presence about you. You have a style, a fashion, you know, the way you dress, your hair, you, even your glasses are like rim, red um, and everything. So you you pop, you you stand out. So I guess that can work against you maybe if you go on stage, if people, it's almost like a, a hot girl or a muscular comic. It's, it I was takes... just going to say that. Yeah, a beautiful girl also. It's very hard for them because people are wondering. They start thinking about you. What's this about? Right, right. So I have to make sure like that I don't dress the way I often dress when I'm going out for the evening. People have asked me to perform. Sometimes I'm in a place and I'm in like black tie or something. And I'm like, I can't go on stage like that. It doesn't feel right. I don't right. have that. I don't have the energy because I think it's too distracting to people. That's how I feel about it. And I could be totally wrong.